Hi, Tatiana. Um, I'm so excited to get to talk to you again. We spoke last year before the reunion show that you guys did, and yes. we talked about Comedy Bang Bang and cried about <laughs> Corn Club together, and it was honestly one of the best conversations I think I've ever had. So it was so, it's wow. so cool to get to talk to you again. You too. Um, so for season two, what has it been like transitioning from narrating everything and voicing everybody to just voicing the clones in season two? It's, it's great. Um, I, I'm, I, it feels much more, you know, organic to our show to have like the family as part of it because they're so, you know, vital to what made the show successful and, and why the fans loved it. So it was, uh, yeah, it was great. Even though we, you know, recorded everything in a vacuum of our own thing, but uh, it was still nice. It's still good to know they were doing it. I did want to ask about that since you, obviously this season, you're not the only cast member who's back. Um, I know you guys didn't record together, but what has it been like to kind of work alongside everybody again? Yeah, it's great. I mean, we, I, we haven't been in the same room for a long time. The last time we really all got to work together uh, was a panel that we did. We did like a read through uh, at the beginning of the pandemic to raise money. And that was like, uh, yeah, that was the, the last time that we really worked together. So it was, it was really, it was great to see everybody again. That's awesome. So um, season two has a number of new clones and the voices that you have for them are so distinct. Blythe in particular has just been so interesting to hear. Um, what inspiration did you draw for their voices? Because I always love the story about how Kroll Show inspired Crystal. I just think that story <laughs> is just so much fun. Right. Uh, good question. Um, for Blythe, there were definitely a few people, um, a few actors that I was interested in who are sort of my age and who have, uh, who are like from kind of wealthy, um, who have like a wealth to their voice. <laughs> I don't know how to like describe it other than that, but like a calm wealth. Um, and something about that, about like that ease that then takes different turns, but there was something about like the embodying of health and the embodying of like well being but like money is involved. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, like people who meditate, but like do it on a mat that is 10, <laughs> 10 grand. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that kind of weird uh, uh, contradiction. Um, and yeah, so that was who I was thinking of for her. I won't name them, but that's, that's who I was thinking <laughs> of for her. <laughs> I do also have to say, like, I grew up in Texas and your Southern accent for the, the other clone that is like Bly's assistant was just so yeah. fun, too. So, <laughs> oh, my God, that was nuts. I think it was like what I like listened to a bunch of Dolly right before I was like, how would Dolly do it? Um, I wish I had a little more time with that one, but it was it was fun to do for sure. It, it's great. So um, I wanted to ask about Vivi because she's really become such a powerful protagonist in the audio show, particularly in season two. What has it been like to develop her story and kind of her persona, but only be able to do it in audio and not have the visual component? It 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 feels it, I, I enjoy it because it does feel physical. Something about her rhythm is like very tense and held and sort of like she doesn't want to betray any emotion that she's feeling it's really about like muting everything um and sort of like this factual speak um so even in doing it it felt like it had to be a physical thing and of course her performance if we were to do it visually would be like Lots of stunts. Should be stunt crazy. So another one of the biggest things about the season, which I know has already kind of set the fandom on fire, is that Kofi and I are pregnant. Um, I love how the events of season one are kind of making them consider how they'll be parents. I think there's the scene in episode two where they talk about their ethics is just so beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. What has it been like to explore that side of Cosima and Delphine? Well, it's it's great because their ethics are they're they're political, they're emotional, they're physically felt like they they embody the whole and the, and they've got like it's it's great to have differing perspectives which I think is also why those two connect is that they do really get each other but also respect that they both have their unique oneness like they are you know very very much individuals and I think that's why they um love each other so much and why and, and it's just such a great way to look at parenting as well. Like, you know, you could both be so in line on everything, but then you have a kid and like suddenly you have 
a very different response to what, how to bring that child into the world. Um, and it, and I think it, it's very relatable. That's awesome. So what would you say has surprised you the most about working on season two? Surprised me the most. Um, I, I just really love where, where life goes. Uh, I really love that journey. Um, and Vivi. So I was just really excited to have like two totally new characters to explore in a way that, you know, we, we normally would have only gotten with the very established characters. It was, um, yeah, I think the story is really compelling. And the stuff about privacy and public life and, you know, consent and all of that being put into, um, it's, it's dealt with in a way that I think is much more interesting than than we've been dealing with it which is just like in so with so much nuance and also with characters that we've already come to love to wonder if their ideas around consent have been uh confused or warped or if you know for their purposes they've repurposed what that is um to make themselves feel okay it's just really it's interesting that's fascinating. So um, we spoke in the past about Clone Club and how it's kind of endured over the years and how like the emotion behind that. With all of that in mind, what are you most excited to see Clone Club respond to with season two? Um, I mean, I'm consistently blown away by like the way that they read into things and how much smarter they are than all of the rest of us. Uh, you know, that they'll see stuff that we didn't see or make connections or write essays about this or extrapolate on this, you know, thread that we pulled. Um, I, I, I just, uh, just excited to see what their response is. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's gonna be great. That's great. So um, I also wanted to ask about Power Trip because the concept for that sounds like so much fun. What drew you to wanting to work on that project both as a voice actor and as an executive producer? Um, it's, a, it's a great story and the character is very strong and uh, she felt like somebody I haven't played before. So I was really excited about that. And it's just this really kind of creative thing to collaborate with the writers and, and sort of um, have them bounce drafts off of me. And I get to, you know, say, say what I feel or, or any questions I have. It's just like, it's a very uh, collaborative open process. And that's my favorite way to work. So it's just nice to be part of it. I love it. So um, last time we talked, you, you recommended Midnight Gospel to me. Um, yeah. that was, it's incredible. I love that show so much. Like so it? I did it. Yeah, it's so wild, but so cool at the same time. Um, what have you been listening to or watching lately? Because you just have the best taste in everything, honestly. <laughs> I've been listening to Arca. Do you know Arca? I don't. She's amazing. Uh, I think she identifies as she. Okay. Um, she's like a really cool artist, um, kind of in the vein of like Sophie in terms of like harder electronic, really uh, kind of like really collisional music. It's it's awesome. I love her. Um, and what else have I been listening to or I've been watching just watching Cheers <laughs> uh, and a lot of like horror movies. I saw. Oh. Titan, have you seen? Oh Titan? no, but I've been meaning to. Don't read. I'm. I hope you haven't read anything. Whatever you've read is not going to even touch what it is. It's okay. beyond. It is beyond. I highly recommend it. It's not easy by any means, but it's like a revelation. I, I absolutely loved it. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for taking the time to get to chat with me. Um, before we go, I did want to congratulate you on She-Hulk um, or as you put it on Sean Dustin's podcast, She Shredder. Um, my boyfriend and I, my boyfriend and I all the time are like, hey, did you get that new She Shredder comic? Or like, what's, what did you hear about She Shredder? Like that has become part of our vernacular. Um, I love that. <laughs> I'm a huge awesome. Marvel fan. I co-host our Marvel podcast at work. So I just wanted to oh, nice. like, congratulate you. I'm, I'm hoping we'll get to talk about it at a certain well. point because yeah. I'm so excited, so. You got she shredder herself, that's great, yeah. I love that. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to talk Thanks to me. Thanks so much.